Today is marks 104 days since the new coalition government uh, took over the administration. And um, I thought it well um, that we reflect over what has happened within that 104 days. Um, and that we, we give um, an honest reflection from our perspective and from my perspective. Uh, as you all know, I, um, I know the administration relatively well and I also headed it up for uh, approximately eight months. But I think I want to start off by saying that the last 104 days um, was unfortunate as we did have a number of uh, serious crises that we faced. Um, these instances of crisis, uh, crises have most certainly had a knock-on effect on service delivery um, to the people of Nelson Mandela Bay, um, as we've seen a significant increase in number of key basic uh, service delivery backlogs. Uh, backlogs in potholes, uh, water leaks, uh, sewage blockages, and of course, faulty street lights. But the biggest crisis there was arguably the withholding of the equitable share um, from the city as a result of the impasse between the National Treasury and, uh, and Nelson Villa Bank. And uh, that impasse, unfortunately, and withholding of, of grant funding and equitable share has had a severe impact on planning within the administration and obviously, again, had a knock-on effect on uh, our ability to provide basic services uh, to the people in Nelson Mandela Bay. The impasse came, and I'm not going to go into uh, uh, that detail. I think most of you know um, how the impasse came about. But I wanted to remind us of some instances uh, or some facts that we might have forgotten. Because I believe that as we stand now, the MBDA has been captured. Why do I say the MBDA has been captured? Council has taken a firm number of resolutions uh, in terms of which the appointment of Mr. Anil Klaba was going to be rescinded. Secondly, the, the fact that the MBDA board must be uh, disbanded. And we know now that the MBDA board refuses to leave. They do not acknowledge the decision that was taken by um, uh, the uh, council. And we also know that Mr. Anil Kaba has basically written to the city manager to say that he doesn't take instructions from her, as if she's not the head of um, the administration. So I wanted to remind us that Mr. Kaba is actually a very close friend of uh, the executive mayor. We know that as early as January 2023, Mr. Kaba wanted to be the CEO of the MBDA, and that information was disclosed to the, the then speaker, and uh, now executive mayor, as well as his party. We know that in that correspondence that was leaked to us, the uh, executive mayor actually acknowledged that he recruited Glenda Perumo, who was the chairperson of the board at that stage, as if he would have some influence over the process. We know that. We saw it. We read it. <clears throat> we know that notwithstanding the fact that he had access to that information, he presided as a speaker of council over an item in terms of which Mr. Anel Kaba was given a golden handshake, and he never disclosed that information to council. We then know that on the 3rd of May, I wrote a letter to Ms. Glenda Perumal to advise her that we urgently require a member's representative uh, a forum as a result of the botched recruitment processes. That's common knowledge. We've, we've all seen that letter. But what you probably don't know, and I only recently found out, um, of the a legal consultation to try and assist the municipality in uh, coming out of this quagmire was two days after I was replaced as a mayor. On Sunday evening, the 28th, as a matter of fact, it's my birthday, the 28th. It was a stress-free birthday. Um, the executive mayor wrote to uh, the chairperson of the MBDA and said to her, proceed to fill 
the vacancy of the CEO. Now, what makes that very interesting is that the executive mayor was was appointed rather late on, on Friday evening, if I remember correctly. The administration didn't work over the weekend. And, uh, um, and he took that decision without having any access, had any access, to the best of my knowledge, to the information that we've had um, at our disposal. Ladies and gentlemen, if you take all of the information that we've, we've known, Mr. Carver was handpicked to become the CEO of the MEDA. What subsequently happened was also uh, a, a common, is also common knowledge, and I'm not going to, to go into detail, except for the fact that we know the council took a unanimous decision. It wasn't disputed by anyone in council to dissolve the board and to set aside the appointment. Notwithstanding those decisions, the executive mayor has met on more than one occasion with the CEO of the MBDA and with the board. There should be no reason for the executive mayor to, to meet with Mr. Carver or with the board, considering uh, what council has decided and considering the massive impasse that we have with Treasury. Now, we are doing a lot of back-channeling work between Treasury and the city, and the city has also written to Treasury to try and secure that money. Remember that the Minister of Finance indicated he will pay that money over to us uh, if we've taken a certain key decision. But ladies and gentlemen, MBDA at this stage is rogue and we have got no control as a municipality over our own entity. And if we do not resolve this issue, I don't anticipate that Treasury will pay us that money, that funding, and it will continue to, to be our biggest crisis. Now, I want to, to end off with this section of the, of the press conference to say that I'm very, very disappointed in the way that the executive mayor has handled the situation. Because I can assure you that any executive mayor would have been able to resolve that issue after the, the resolution of council with a phone call. And what it tells me, and that the only reason it hasn't been resolved, is Mr. Gary Fanica do not want to see the removal of the board, and he does not want to see the uh, removal of his friend, Mr. Anil Kava, from that position. And then lastly, that I want to say there, I've got it under good authority that Mr. Anil Kava is now meeting with municipal officials, senior municipal officials, um, in unrelated matters to the MBDA, which means that he, in all probability, is now starting to interfere in the administration of, this, of the city as well. And we've all known um, the, the fight that has existed between him and, and Dr. Um, Marsley. If we move over to, to other aspects of the municipality and uh, performance of uh, um, the respective directorates. Um, if you look at budget and treasury, uh, we are very disappointed in how the grant funding crisis were, were handled. Um, and we have virtually seen no, no correspondence from the MMC Finance uh, in assisting to deal uh, with this issue. We've also not seen um, uh, any statements from her regarding the capital expenditure nor the grant funding expenditure for the previous financial year. Um, and I can disclose now that the, that the capital expenditure was in the region of about 83% for the previous financial year. Um, and that the grant funding expenditure uh, was it was um, slightly higher, um, uh, just over 90%. And I think that that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is actually not a bad performance, um, considering the fact that by the end of the first quarter, our spending was only standing at 2% of total spending. You would remember the chaos that existed in council um, uh, up until the first quarter of the previous financial year, and then um, uh, there was a regime change on the 22nd of, of September. 
Um, what is concerning is that there's no disconnection blitzes anymore. Um, there's an estimated 120,000 um, households, uh, residential households, as well as commercial uh, uh, um, enterprises, that is, that is tampered with the electricity meters. And you would have noticed that there was a lot of uh, um, uh, disconnection blitzes uh, in the past. That has come to a grinding halt, unfortunately. There's also been no sessions of the Revenue Enhancement Committee, which is very, very important, um, nor no sittings of the Budget Monitoring uh, Forum. Um, those are all uh, mostly negative, but what is good is that the annual financial statements was uh, again delivered on time by the end of August. There has been improvements at supply chain um, during this period, um, partially because there has been somebody seconded from National Treasury to come and assist, and there's been an estimated 20,000 additional households added to the ATPP program, which means that more poor people have access to um, to a few basic services because of the change that was implemented in the policy. Um, when it comes to, to uh, corporate services, local labor forum continues to be dysfunctional. That is a massive issue and potentially might uh, increase our risk of, of industrial action within the city. IT is an absolute mess in, in, uh, uh, in the administration. Um, and you know what? We don't even, uh, I don't think we make enough of a noise about that fact, that large sections of the administration cannot receive calls from the public, cannot receive calls from, from councillors, cannot access their mail, either from the public or from councillors, which means that if you um, uh, send an email to, to uh, a municipal official, there's a likelihood that that municipal official never get your mail. That is unacceptable. It has been going on for about two months already, in excess of two months. And there is no prospects of, get it, of it getting uh, um, resolved. It affects the traffic department, disaster management, metro police, water and sanitation services, and others. What is good in corporate services, there's been uh, progress with regards to the macro structure, and I think that the, uh, that the council has just taken a, um, a decision on the macro structure. Human settlements, we've seen that um, the city d delivered 558 housing units. Um, that was the, the, the number that they ended on, and it was short of the, of the 195, if I remember correctly, that was, was uh, needed to be built. I understand that, that that funding will be transferred, and that for the new financial year that we're planning on building 667 housing units, that's good, considering that the financial year before, the 2022-2023 financial year, only 28 housing top structures were built. And the year prior to that, only 27 housing top structures were built. So it's definitely a move in the right direction. However, this 667 uh, uh, top structure units um, might not, we might not be able to deliver it if our planning is not in place, and our planning is not in place because we are not getting the grant funding from uh, national government and our equitable share from, from national government. Okay, then um, what, what is bad in, in human settlements, or not so good, um, I think I've, I've mentioned the, the impasse with Treasury and the, the valuable time lost for, for planning. Then unnecessary delays with, with um, town planning amendments as a result of deferring items at council and, uh, um, and also the lack of standing committee. Ladies and gentlemen, every month, that a town planning amendment is delayed, it is a, 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 um, an opportunity cost for the city. Why? Because town planning amendments lead to economic growth, leads, leads to investment by, by um, um, developers and, uh, and business owners. And that unfortunately has been woeful over the last couple of, of months and certainly not, not been prioritized by the new administration. Electricity and energy, I think one of the, the, the best news that we've received, one of the greatest news was that we're proceeding with the curtailment program, and, and that's really, really good. We should, we should uh, applaud that, that that has been introduced. However, one should also be mindful of that. If you want to implement that, the city is going to need um, uh, probably in excess of a billion uh, rand to uh, purchase the smart meters to, to run the, 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 the project if it is successful. So we need to be able to, to identify that, that funding as soon as possible.
because we don't have the, the, the own funding to do it. Then um, there's been some progress with identification of temporary connections. I think we should uh, applaud it. The bad side of electricity and energy is the fact that, that there is not uh, a community announcement and it's not complaining about street lights. Ladies and gentlemen, there's in excess of 10,000 street lights out in the city with no plan to, to fix it. Our communities are dark and it um, unfortunately uh, um, uh, um, then makes our communities unsafe. There's been a number of unplanned, tens uh, uh, of unplanned outages that cause havoc with, with in, um, industry. And I just want you to use this as an example. I know for a fact that every time there's, a, there's an out, um, unplanned outage in uh, Struenda, that uh, a manufacturer like Ford loses half a million rand. Just like that. Even if there's just a, a 10 second in interruption. Now, administration does not understand how important it is to prevent those at all costs and to, to have regular uh, shutdown for maintenance communicated with, with, with business. And this is uh, um, something that we've seen um, that's on the increase. Okay, uh, we have, um, uh, in terms of, of MBDA, I think we've spoken enough about the MBDA. Um, but what is very, very uh, uh, um, concerning is the fact that our tourism industry, and this is something that I think that, that is some homework for you, don't have to take my word, but go and check with the tourism industry. They are crying, they are bleeding, and they feel that, that all of their concerns are just not uh, being adhered to. And I've met with stakeholders within the tourism, and they're very concerned about the upcoming festive season and, um, and uh, uh, what has been happening in the city. Uh, for example, the fact that the Beachfront Safety Forum um, which we wanted to roll out to other areas have collapsed and no longer is, is functional and we've seen a kind of uh, increase in crime on the beach front. Then I, I and E infrastructure and engineering, we've seen that there's been um, new water meters, meters that were purchased, that's a step in the right direction. However, 5,000 outstanding water leaks, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember correctly, by February, we managed to get the, um, the backlog down to under 1,000. Remember that water leaks? Uh, grow every week we, we have in the region of about 400 uh, um, to 700 on average about 500 new water leaks that is reported so that means that that we are have slowed down in terms of our uh, um, program to fix water leaks There's also uh, some 5,000 outstanding sewer blockages that's a massive massive problem and I don't think that the new administration has been as transparent as they could have been with regards to dealing with the sewer crisis. It is one of our <coughs> biggest crises. If the immediate crisis is the, the funding crisis, the uh, second most important crisis is, 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 is sewer, and, um, and, and many of you complain with me, or have in the past complained about uh, these type of, of issues. That also affected our uh, administration, and, and I'll make that very, very uh, uh, clear. Public health, um, we've seen that there has really not been any sustainable solutions to illegal dumping. And to be honest, our city has been uh, um, filthy for too long. And uh, we continue to, to go from area to area, trying to, to, to clean up hot spots with no sustainable solution. Um, and I'm also very concerned about the fact that, that the manganese problem hasn't been uh, um, uh, resolved. There were a number of very uh, um, important discussions that we've had with stakeholders, including with parastatals, to try and find uh, a, um, a resolves to the manganese problem. That is, by the looks of it, come to a grinding halt, and we had to refer the stakeholders and civic society to the city manager. Um, and it doesn't seem that there is too much political leadership in that regard. Uh, roads and stormwater, I think that we, we, we must implore the fact that there's a lot of progress. KB, it's your old department, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. Um, in terms of, of road marking, what is bad? There's an estimated 15,000 potholes currently in Nelson and Delaware. Uh, um, and I've taken note of the, uh, of the, um, the targets that the administration, new administration has put up for themselves. Uh, but that was, I think, 4,500 potholes over a period of three months. We now have 15,000 potholes outstanding. And uh, it's simply put not good enough, and, and we need to, to excel in, in getting it fixed. Then, obviously, um, uh, uh, there is also the IPDS buses that are, that are no longer running. 
And I fear that the, the real reason that the IPS buses are running was because of the withholding of grant funding and not necessarily the fact that th there's so much maintenance needed on all of their buses. Some of them do need uh, maintenance, but there is also um, uh, um, uh, some buses that, that is in, in working order that could have delivered the service. And I think that we at a crossroads really with, with IPS, ladies and gentlemen. This uh, project has limped along for such a long time that I think the Treasury is going to fairly soon going to start start asking the question, are we getting value for money? Can we continue dumping hundreds of millions of rands into this project and uh, and not see the maximum benefit to um, the residents of Nelson Uh Safety and security, they continue with regular roadblocks, which is good. Um, and uh, what is bad, unfortunately, is the fact that we have not seen any tangible uh, um, progress with regards to vandalism and that the vandalism steering, crew, um, uh, steering committees um, that had representatives from, from uh, various stakeholders are by the looks of it no longer sitting. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that I fear that Nelson Mandela Bay is regressing again. Um, when I arrived back in the, in the city um, council in August uh, last year, I reminded the, the uh, um, then executive mayor and council that our performance, KPI-wise, in terms of service delivery, was the worst performance on record since the inception of this administ uh, administration as a metro in, in December 2000, in a period of over 20 years. And that was nothing to be proud of. I believe that uh, if you go and look at the, um, uh, the number of KPIs that were met, that we have made significant progress in the last financial year under the previous administration. Um, and it's not me saying so, it's the, the KPIs that were met. And I, and I believe that there was a good feeling in the city across all communities. They could see that there were pro that progress was being made. And let's not be under any uh, um, illusion here. The city was far from, from being fixed. It was far from fixed. It was still a broken administration. But we managed to make progress because we didn't interfere in the administration. And we didn't meddle in the affairs. And I, and I want to also remind you that it was so chaotic that at one stage there were three people that all laid claim to the position of city manager in the city. And there were litigation that were uh, unfolding uh, around it. We made sure that we didn't choose a side, that we allowed the, the litigation to play out, and, um, and uh, that we abided by the, the judgment. It was difficult times, ladies and gentlemen, difficult times, and we came through all of that just to regress a couple of months ago to one of the people that at that stage laid claim to the position and was given a golden handshake has now been brought back into it. I want to say that apart from all of the problems that we have as an administration, this city has got so much potential. I'm tremendously optimistic about this city for a number of reasons. Because if you look at other metropolitan municipalities, the majority of them are factually bankrupt. We are not factually bankrupt. We still have the financial ability to invest in our, in our infrastructure. Yeah. If you look at, um, at the state of our infrastructure, and although it's been deteriorating over the last couple of years, it is not nearly in such a collapsed state as many of our other uh, bigger municipalities. And if you couple that with the fact that we've got the financial ability to invest in that infrastructure, that is good for us. But also, if you, if you know that Nelson Mandela Bay has got one of the most moderate climates in the, in the world, don't call us a windy city, it's the city with one of the most moderate climates in the world, we've got more than 300 days worth of sunshine every year in the city. And the only reason I'm mentioning that is because there is going to be significant financial investment by both the public as well as the private sector in, in, in terms of renewable energy in, in this region over the next couple of years. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bring us energy security. So notwithstanding all of the negatives and the fact that you can very often get upset KB and uh, Georgina about um, how politicians sometimes shoot us in the foot as, an, as a city, there's a lot of positives that can still happen. And I believe that the stars are busy aligning for Nelson Mandela Bay to grow as an economy, and that we'll see a lot of spin -off, uh, positive spin-offs in, uh, in the foreseeable future. It will, however, help 
is council gets its act together and make sure that it throws its weight behind um, the private sector and, uh, um, and the public sector in, 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 in terms of these matters. I want to end off by saying that, because I've probably spoke for, for way too long, eh? um, what we want to do here in, in, in Nelson Delaware is we want to ensure that we get a stable coalition government and a stable administration. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying a coalition government where the DA is part of it. Yes, of course we would want to go back in government. But it's not about the DA. And it's not about Ratif Wittner. It's not about Kubela Mokhotosi or Georgina Faltman. It is about the people of Nelson Mandela Bay. So over the next couple of, of days and, and a week or so, I'm going to be writing as leader of the opposition to each and every political party that's represented in council to start talking about what it is that we need uh, to achieve in order to bring stability in, in Nelson Mandela And that would include some uh, um, key deliverables on which we can all agree. And these include parties, all of the parties in fact, that is within the uh, ruling coalition and those that is on the outside. Because you see, all of us have got a duty to ensure that we get Nelson Mandela Bay working together. In the event that that does not work, and it would be very sad because if a 10 party coalition government could work here for eight months and make progress over that period, it would be sad if a four party coalition can't work with the assistance of other political parties as well. This does not work. The DA will actively pursue the removal of the current government and um, with an aim of replacing it with something that works. So I think that that, that is my message today. Um, it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, we've, 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 we've started regressing. And the only reason, ladies and gentlemen, if we are very honest with one another, that's now, obviously speaking on behalf of, of the DA, the only reason is because politicians decide to protect the interest of officials. That's why we're regressing. We've been there. We've seen the, 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 the story unfold again, and we, we see it happening again. If we can put a stop to that, ladies and gentlemen, the sky's the limit for Nelson Delabay because we've got so much going for it. I'm going to leave you with...